could be depressed is our equal protection. Seems I'm on my last Talk Radio 790 KABC. This is the Carl Gerber Workplace Lawyer Show. I'm Carl Gerber, and I'm a real workplace lawyer. Tonight's radio play, well, it involves, guess what? A woman! Tell them something they don't know. Well, ma'am, if I knew more about your particular situation, I I might have told the midnight audience, but then again, if it was attorney-client privilege, I wouldn't say. You haven't even told me whether you'll take my case yet. The attorney-client privilege applies if somebody is seeking advice from a lawyer who has been hired or not hired yet. Is there an exception if somebody has to come to your office at midnight, sit out on the balcony, on the latrine, and be broadcast on this stupid radio show? You're asking me too many questions. I'm limiting myself, especially at midnight, to only one answer and one question I deem relevant. I didn't catch your name. I didn't say my name. Can I ask you one question? I will permit one, but after that, I don't feel any more necessary. Why am I sitting on a latrine on a balcony outside your office talking on a walkie-talkie? You know, ma'am, it was obviously your choice to sit on the latrine. You could have opted to stand in this little balcony uh, in a office. uh, Sort of. I, I, not so much in office, but on balcony consultation where, I, well, I'm in the building and you're out on the balcony at midnight. I can't accept that. Accepting who you are is the first step in self actualization. I am the person who has another employment lawyer, and you're supposed to decide if you can take the case over. <laughs> I don't accept sobbins. There's always a reason why the client has to change lawyers, and those reasons relate to unrealistic expectations from the client, a crazy client, or a very bad case. Rarely is the old lawyer in a sobbin as bad as the client claims. He wants me to accept a settlement. Well, get it out, ma'am. What's the case about? Sexual harassment. Did a supervisor or manager do it? He was on the same level as me. All right, so what was your position? I was a director. Still management? Uh, Doesn't matter that he was the same level as you. What were you the director of? I don't want to say quite yet. Were you on the board of directors? They call the department heads directors. Well, this is a private company, right? I mean, this isn't a public university, is it? It's not a university. Okay. Was the sexual harassment verbal or physical? I'm not sure how to answer that. So in order to make an assessment, I need to know what the acts of sexual harassment were. The acts? He wasn't acting. Are you? Yes. Who's the old lawyer? If I said on the air, I think he'd get business. Don't you want new clients calling you at 877-525-0700 during the week? I called 877-525-0700 and you agreed to do this meeting. And when I called 877-525-0700 back and said I was a Remus Helms referral, you said we'd have to meet at midnight. I don't recall this at all, Um, but the part about Remus Helms referrals having to meet me at midnight after Friday is done is correct. Does it sound right? 877-525-0700 is my office number. And the part about Remus Helms referrals having to meet me at midnight about 12.06 a.m. on Saturday is right because that's when this show starts. Broadcasting on AM 790 KBC and it gets live streamed in the Carl Gerber with a K channel. I do need guests. Do you want to read the settlement agreement? Oh, that would be a good idea. Can you read French? No. Oh, I might have an English version somewhere. 
where did this conduct happen? Um, I mean, why do you have a settlement agreement in French? The defense lawyer speaks French. You know, he's a show off. Do you read French? No. Um, could you please send the electronic form of the agreement to the email I gave you? I did. I, I never got anything. <sighs> People say there are a lot of things I might have got if I just accepted. Well, people have advised you to accept the settlement? No, other things in life, like a political position, getting married to him. Oh, um, okay, the settlement agreement landed up in spam. Um, yeah, it's kind of weird. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of stuff in there like bad language. That's probably why it got spammed. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm, I'm reading it now. It looks like there are a lot of standard terms like dismissing the lawsuit upon payment, the fact you can sign in counterparts, electronic signatures are okay. It's listing off uh, what your claims are. It says he's stuck. His uh, up and grabbed your... Ugh, we're getting censored! It says the plaintiff contends touching her fingernail caused her severe emotional distress and mental distress? Yeah, that was some messed up stuff. I'm kind of confused. Um, how did touching your fingernail when he handed you a check to pay a vendor cause you sexual harassment? I can't, I can't. You don't know what trauma that caused me. Oh, I see. This was during Corona. You were not happy about him touching uh, your fingernail. That was in 2018. It was completely degrading. I was sitting at my desk and out of nowhere, he came in and handed me a check to pay the tamale vendor. Why was this so unusual? You weren't normally dealing with tamale vendors? Not always. Sometimes. The thing was, he was in his office and then came into my office. Okay. He only did that on Mondays. Why not the rest of the week? He'd usually be out seeing clients, going to other branches. You know, given the coronavirus, the um, potential clients, at least the ones that come at midnight, have to sit on the balcony and talk through a walkie-talkie connected to the internet, and everyone's on the internet, so we don't always have the best connections. I, I do apologize for this, but uh, ma'am, I'm not getting this. Part of the check touched my fingernail. Well, were your, your, uh, were your nails gels or uh, natural? What difference does that make? Well, I'm trying to put this in perspective. Gel, if you really want to know. Okay, uh, the check making contact with an extension of your body. Well, that could be battery, I guess. It sure was. You can't just go around handing people checks and letting the edge of the check touch their fingernails. I completely agree. These days, if somebody can see you, don't have your gloves on yet, they shouldn't be trying to hand you things, I mean. One little touch and you could go down for a month. Maybe even be hospitalized. In fact, your whole family. It is no laughing matter. Then why are you making jokes out of it? I am? That's not all he did. Keep reading the settlement agreement. I'm still not dumb at the first incident of sexual harassment. Do we have to keep talking about it? Every time I talk about it, it brings me back to that Monday. It was about 10 in the morning. He came out of nowhere and handed me the check for the tamale vendor. It was at my desk. What I was wondering is whether the check was big. I mean, maybe the thrusting action towards your fingernails really dug in, did some damage to your gels. They weren't at-home glue-ons. This was before COVID. Right, but the size of the check might matter. It, it was $1,414. Well, that's not that large of a check. That's not the point. Well, then what is? 
all those 14s. Oh, excuse me. I'm saying I, I, it's about that time. I got to say it. I, I have to say it. This program has been made possible through a generous grant from the Helms Foundation's 5.14 billion in funding and 14 inches of endowment. Do you understand now? Gosh, I mean, how could have I missed that detail of the check? The tamale vendor was only owed $1,413. I see. I mean, your boss added an extra dollar so the amount would correspond to a certain uh, pertinent measurement pertaining to uh, Remus Helms, the most important man in Sun Valley, California. You are listening That's to the Carl Gerber me. Workplace Lawyer Show, ma'am. Call me at the office between 9 o'clock and 6.30 at 877-525-0700. Yeah, 877-525-0700. Since 1993, the Employment Lawyers Group has been a results-oriented law firm whose goal is to get the client what they deserve. They've represented thousands of California employees who've lost their jobs, been sexually harassed, subjected to employment discrimination, or were owed wages on an individualized or group basis, such as a class action. They have a high rate of success. There are few situations involving employment law that they have not confronted. At the forefront of employee rights, they're often the first employee law firm to confront a new legal issue for an experienced employment lawyer call 877-525-0700 that's 877-525-0700 they have call takers standing by online read more about the firm at employeelawca.com they have offices throughout southern california make your work problem theirs to solve Talk Radio 790 KBC. This is the Carl Gerber Workplace Lawyer Show. I'm Carl Gerber. I'm a real workplace lawyer talking to a potential client on the balcony of my office at midnight. And she just told me about a check she got from uh, the guy who's sexually harassing her. And I'm wondering, ma'am, did you ask your boss why he added in the additional dollar on the $1,413 tamale bill? He said he felt the tamale vendor went above and beyond. Really made the luncheon enjoyable. Well, that's good to know. This is sort of embarrassing. I need to use the restroom. Oh, um, I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> nobody can come into the building. It's sort of an emergency. Well, just lift up the toilet seat on the latrine you're sitting on and shut off the video on Zoom. Um, the sound too, I guess. Are you serious? I'm, I'm not sure what the other options are. This is a dilemma with all this outdoor stuff during the virus. I'm, I'm not so happy about the condition of the sidewalk in front of my office. You know, those restaurants try to hose it down, but I mean, seriously, all they're doing is spreading it, not even diluting it. I am not going to take care of business on this balcony looking into those apartment buildings. Well, I guess the only other option is to, well, uh, as they say, hold it. Yeah, the tamales seemed good at the time. Oh, hey, I see a curtain here. What if I just draw the curtain? Well, now you've got it. Ah. <sighs> I'm feeling much better now. I must say, I don't know any other radio programs that cover situations like this. I mean, it sort of reminds me of Sweet, Sweet Badass, the first black exploitation movie ever! I know. $1,414 for tamales that cost $1,413. Okay, so my next question on this sexual harassment case, uh, um, who was the luncheon for and how did this relate to your job? I was trying to get, uh, we were fundraising. Is that part of your job? Sure. I was in charge of the fundraising department. We're a pack. Are you still a pack? Those are my initials. Yeah, I meant like, is this a political action committee? 
<laughs> one of the biggest in California. I see. Um, you, you need to get off the We train. were having trouble getting fundraising. This was right after the November elections. Well, did the tamales help? The luncheon was a success. One person donated $14 million. Hmm. I, I wonder who that might have been. I think you know. Oh, well, in that case, um, you know, maybe adding the extra dollar to create a final series of important Remus Helms numbers was just sort of like, woo-wee, we got a $14 million donation from Remus Helms. Precisely. But is it an act of sexual harassment or... Just being excited about getting such a big donation from a certain celebrity who has a thing about 14s. You're getting confused. I didn't care about all the 14s in the check and the extra dollar to make the final figure of 14. Well, then how is this sexual harassment? Ugh, I thought we already went through this. The edge of the check touched my fingernail. Let's, uh, let's uh, keep going with the allegations. Good. There's a lot more. Okay, I'm still reading the Selma agreement. It, it says, wait, um, I think this is French. I can't read it. I can translate. I'm one step ahead of you. I'm, huh? I, I'm not sure I got this right. I know. I shouldn't have left his husband plan my wedding. Um... The guy who allegedly sexually harassed you, um, his husband's Pierre, who was paid to plan and cater your wedding? That's right. I think he did all of this to me because the wedding didn't go through. Were there cancellation fees involved? I couldn't get anything back. I wasn't entitled to. Well, um, I mean, was there some bad blood uh, about you wanting a refund because the wedding didn't go through? Nothing like that. Well, then what does the alleged sexual harasser's husband being your wedding planner have to do with this case? Uh, nothing, I guess. Okay, so the settlement agreement talks about a release of liability against the, the harasser and his husband because your wedding didn't go forward. Why is that? Right. That's what I want to change in the agreement. It did go forward. Well, then why is all this in here about that? I couldn't accept. You couldn't accept what? Do you have time for a little story? Well, since this is a one-hour show, I mean, sure, go ahead. Uh, bore the audience with your wedding story. The fog had burned away. The water in the ocean was a blue-green as the sun reflected off the little waves in the marina. The way the sun shines on those waves, it was a beautiful orange mixing into blue and green that in and of itself made the water look like it was moving, slowly building up to the north, or was this the southwest? Maybe just west, and this is an important detail. Um, okay, um, yeah, this sounds really picturesque. Where was this? My wedding! I thought your wedding didn't go forward. I told you, I couldn't accept. Does this relate to this case or not? I don't think it does. Then why are you telling me the color of the water at your wedding? I asked, and then you said this was a one-hour show and you had time for a little story. Um, <laughs> I mean, not one about mixing colors in the waves of some polluted marina. I was wearing all white. Imagine that. Everybody I knew was there, and everybody he knew was there. The voters were there, too. Where was this? The Ritz-Carlton, Marina Del Rey. Okay, and the harasser's husband was the wedding planner. Oh, yes, he did a wonderful job. I recommended him many times. Again, um, why are we talking about this wedding in which you were apparently satisfied about the services of the harasser's husband? This is the sexual harasser who thus far all we know touched a fingernail attachment, a, a gel nail, if you will, with the corner of a check to a vendor. Did you see 
how much money they offered me? Well, it's it's a hundred thousand dollar settlement. Did, did you lose your job over this? Of course not. I I am a top fundraiser in this country. <laughs> What are the rest of these acts of sexual harassment? I am still telling the story about the wedding. Can you finish that story relatively soon? Because it has nothing to do with your case. And I'm not being paid by the hour to hear this. He, not the harasser, my groom, was wearing a three-piece tailcoat. He looked so handsome and the point the minister went through the whole do you take her as your lawfully wedded wife thing and he said so gentlemanly i do when it came to my turn i said i can't accept that proposition <laughs> what i heard the crowd gasp they moved their heads like she's doing it again doing what again I mean, the same thing that you're, 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 you're talking about? <laughs> what are you talking no, about? No, not that. I'd never been married before. I mean, never been all the way up to the vow thing before. I'm, I'm really confused. I, I've read the alleged acts of sexual harassment now. I, I just don't see this situation as big sexual harassment. You don't? How can you say that? Well, a, a gay man handing you a check to touch a corner of your fingernail it has nothing to do with sex or a date. And, um, you know, I, I don't know why the extra dollar was in there. You're not mentioning all the other stuff. Uh, it, yeah, it says in the settlement agreement that um, he, he looked surprised when you sat down. How is that sexual harassment? I was giving a speech. It was about a hundred degrees outside in the direct sun. There was a chair out there about five minutes into the speech. I sat down. Who is the speech to? Quite a few members of the California Assembly. This was at a fundraiser for the Newsom campaign out somewhere in the Central Valley. Well, how long was the speech? I was just almost done when I sat down. I mean, look, I don't, I don't see how a reasonable woman of your age and makeup would be offended. I am not wearing any makeup. <laughs> That's not what I mean. Don't you think the case is worth more for somebody like me? You know, I really don't like that kind of talk. A person is a person and hurt feelings and emotional distress. It's not worthless to somebody who makes an hourly wage. I didn't make an hourly wage. Uh, this is the Carl Gerber Workplace Lawyer Show. I, I'm Carl Gerber. I don't know what this woman's issue is. It doesn't sound like sexual harassment. Please call me about a real sexual harassment case at 877-525-0700 during the week. That's 877-525-0700. Once again, 877-525-0700. This is a one-hour show. We'll be back to hear more about this in a minute. Since 1993, the Employment Lawyers Group has been a results-oriented law firm whose goal is to get the client what they deserve. They've represented thousands of California employees who've lost their jobs, been sexually harassed, subjected to employment discrimination, or were owed wages on an individualized or group basis, such as a class action. They have a high rate of success. There are few situations involving employment law that they have not confronted. At the forefront of employee rights, they're often the first employee law firm to confront a new legal issue. For an experienced employment lawyer call 877-525-0700 that's 877-525-0700 they have call takers standing by online read more about the firm at employeelawca.com they have offices throughout southern california make your work problem theirs to solve Suspect class could be depressing. Uh, talk radio 790 KBC. You listen to Carl Gerber, Workplace Lawyer Show. I'm Carl Gerber, and I'm a real workplace lawyer. And we're talking to some woman on the balcony of my office here. It's like 1230 in the morning. I don't know. 
I'm reading your contract, your settlement agreement, ma'am, and it says you were paid two hundred fifty thousand a year plus benefits, and this was not necessarily a full time job you had. You were only required to work sixty hours a month, but some months around election season would be more. That's right. That's why I think my emotional distress must be worth more. But also because, look, I am a famous person. No, <laughs> I can. Completely forgot to catch your name. We've been going a couple of days now. I mean, weeks. I guess with you on the latrine in the balcony and me firing off quite a few probing questions, I never asked your name. It's in the settlement agreement you've been reading. It is. <laughs> Okay, so like, uh, if it isn't a hundred thousand you want for this non-case, what is it that you would take? I don't know. You're supposed to know. You do this all the time. None of the alleged acts are sexual harassment. I don't even know why they're paying you. It's probably the embarrassment the whole thing would bring to the pack. Well, that you're claiming your boss was surprised when you sat down near the end of the short speech and the whole check and fingernail gel thing incident. Come on, there are two more events. <laughs> yes. Uh, it says he looked at you when you said the committee could not accept a donation from a, a literacy organization when they were hoping it could go into a lobbying effort to make more money to purchase personal electronic devices so that children could read more books online. Do you have any idea what they wanted the kids to read? I'm, I'm not sure that matters. I mean, looking um, at you when you refuse a donation, that's not really sexual harassment. It was the way he looked at me. How did he look at you? With his eyes! I'm just not seeing this. He sure saw me. Right. You still don't know what they wanted the kids to read. <laughs> what? I mean, Dr. Seuss? Old scripts from the Carl Gerber workplace lawyer show. Oh, that is very inappropriate. I'm glad you turned them down. They thought they could redact all the inappropriate stuff. <laughs> they did. I told them. I told them. You can't mash up a work of art. How would the naked statue of Christ be if all you saw were his eyes? Uh, I'm, I'm just lost here, but maybe the latrine isn't. You haven't ever seen Christ's eyes, have you? Oh, I mean, $100,000 is a lot of money for a non-case. But they aren't taking into consideration who I am. You're an ex respect it. Respect the fundraiser in certain political communities. I mean, I get that. I mean, maybe that's why they're paying you $100,000 for a non-case. You still haven't told me what you would take. I have thought about that. I have some in my mind. What is it? $114 million. <laughs> What? <laughs> no judge would let a verdict of 114 million stand on this case. I don't think any jury would award that to you either. I mean, anyway, I don't even think you'd win. Uh, how, how would it be for your reputation if you lost this case? Okay, five million then. You know, I'm a, I'm definitely not taking this case over. I, I don't even think it's a case. I, I don't know why the other lawyer accepted your case. I am a very famous person. Um, unfortunately, since you've been out on the balcony, I haven't been able to see your face. It's sort of dark out there too, and it's, you know, it's close to one in the morning. Oh, should I turn my video back on? I'm not using the latrine anymore. Maybe not for a little while, at least. Uh, you're coming now! I, I mean, you're coming in! I thought you followed politics. 
Well, this is a highly charged political show intended to strike some balance on the station. Of course I follow politics. I was wondering about that. Did they know I'd be on tonight? Well, I don't have to give the station too much advance notice who will be on this show. They assume it's a Remus Helms referral. Well, that's all they need. That's good enough for them. Actually, a lot better than... Then what? Becoming president? Well, that would be a difficult job. I mean, there are a lot of issues this country is going through right now. If things don't get better, we won't be looked at as a free country anymore, as a democracy. I know. Maybe I should have accepted. Well, this whole settlement offer is still on the table, right? I am sure it is, but I am never going to accept $100,000. That isn't what I was referring to. Um, I just don't know how this particular episode measures up to the other little goodies on the Carl Gerber with the K channel on YouTube. We've had some very unusual guests. All referrals of Remus Helms, the most important man in Sun Valley, California, who made his initial penile seed money. I am sorry. I need to draw the curtain again. I guess all that night air is causing... Um... I was nervous about going on this program. I've never been on a show like this before. I drank a lot of water before I came here. Always remember to flush. It's not the kind of thing you want to forget. That was one of my campaign slogans. You do know who I am. I mean, I, yeah, I remember hearing that when I was in junior high school. I never knew that it came from a political campaign. Oh, yeah. I could have been in Washington. What happened? It went all the way up to the convention. They ran four days, and on the fourth day, it was my turn. You got a chance to speak at the political convention? I mean, that's big. I told you it might make a difference who I was. Had you ever spoken at a political convention before? Not when the whole thing was about me. I mean, I spoke on the first night and pretty much every night. Were you like the, you know, the head of the party? I would have been. I would have been one of those people called a super delegate. Wow. I'd been campaigning for a year, longer, but not for the top position. I couldn't believe I'd ever get there. Whose campaign were you working on? My own. <laughs> wow, again. Uh, uh, Ma'am, remember, don't forget the flush. It's just not the kind of thing you want to forget. I had it in the bag. What was in your bag? I shouldn't have said that. Uh, why? I was traveling a lot, and I had to take something with me. A lot of people take those things when they travel. Suitcases? No! The Remus Helm sex doll. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, I've done some traveling myself. I don't look at other people's suitcases, but I, I... I just don't see a lot of people dragging all of that around with them across the country. Look! When you're running for such a high office, it is very stressful. Well, I'm, I'm kind of confused on this whole time frame. This was about... When was this? Yeah, I was in junior high school in the 80s. This wasn't during the 80s. What are you talking about? The Democratic National Convention. That's over with. It's so over. Well, I thought Joe gave a powerful speech. I mean, I felt empowered. That's not the convention I am talking about. What convention are you talking about? The Democratic National Convention! Um, yeah, if I'm not mistaken, Joe Biden accepted the nomination at the Democratic National Convention last month. That's not the convention it was at. Right, you were at one, not in the 80s, and you had a Remus Helm sex doll with you because you were really stressed out. If you were a first woman, 
Oh, you'll never understand. You know, I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. Um, I'm having an incredibly hard time understanding what you're talking about. We're going to have to sort this out. I, I'm sorry, everyone. I, I got to screen these guests a little bit more carefully. I, I'm really lost here on a, so many different levels. I don't see this being a sexual harassment case. I don't know what political position this woman is talking about. So I'm going to give you a phone number and you should call me about a real case because I really am an employment lawyer and I do sexual harassment cases. Call me at 877-525-0700 during normal business hours. That's 877-525-0700 for unpaid wages. Maybe your job just stopped paying you for some reason. It's commissions, it's bonuses. I really do a lot of cases for unpaid wages, class actions, things like that. We do some wrongful termination too, so call us at 877-525-0700 and go and listen to Carl Gerber at the K Channel on YouTube. This is every fourth week we have a one-hour episode. This is a one-hour episode, so just stay tuned. Oh, whoa, whoa. Since 1993, the Employment Lawyers Group has been a results-oriented law firm whose goal is to get the client what they deserve. They've represented thousands of California employees who've lost their jobs, been sexually harassed, subjected to employment discrimination, or were owed wages on an individualized or group basis, such as a class action. They have a high rate of success. There are few situations involving employment law that they have not confronted. At the forefront of employee rights, they're often the first employee law firm to confront a new legal issue. For an experienced employment lawyer call 877-525-0700 that's 877-525-0700 they have call taker standing by online read more about the firm at employeelawca.com they have offices throughout southern california make your work problem theirs to solve Well, this is the Carl Gerber Workplace Lawyer Show, proudly broadcasting on 790 KABC. That's talk radio. I'm Carl Gerber. I'm a real workplace lawyer. I've, I've got a, it's late at night, and maybe that's why we're so confused, but I, I don't understand what this woman's saying. She's at a convention. She didn't accept. I, I, I don't know what's happening. It's simple. I was at the Democratic National Convention. It was the final night. That's the night the candidate with the most votes is supposed to accept the nomination. Yeah, if you say so. I'd campaigned the whole year. I mean, a good 14 months. I was tired. But I beat everybody out. Well, isn't it the uh, presidential candidate who accepts the nomination on the final night of the convention? Ooh, that's how it worked when I was there. Who was the candidate? Maybe that would help us place the year of this convention. I was. What office did you end up holding? No office. I'm, well, I'm sorry to hear the campaign didn't end so well. It was a great campaign. I had the most votes. Well, why didn't you get whatever position it was you were running for? I was standing there in Minneapolis thinking, I am Mary Tyler Moore. But then it dawned on me, I am a real person and she's just a fictional female news professional in a male-dominated world. I love that show. <laughs> Don't even get me started. <laughs> I remember Lou Grant telling her, I'll lose some teeth if you lose some weight. No, I think it was the other way around. I'll lose some weight if you lose some teeth. Or maybe he didn't have any teeth and she had them all. I don't know. <laughs> that was is a great one. <laughs> but back to the DNC. I am up there at the podium. Everyone is thinking all these things about me being a groundbreaker, a trailblazer the country is going to change forever i'll probably get elected to ferraro um th this must have been really exciting uh miss pac it's... oh yes it was i was supposed to accept the nomination oh wow i got up to the podium i went through all the things i'd do for the country all the changes i'd make everybody was cheering 
the Nielsen's that night showed 90% of all Americans watching. What happened next? I needed to read my speech at that point. I'd been unscripted and it was great, but there were some things I really needed to say. Okay. My aide handed me my suitcase. Oh, no! That's what I thought. He was in there. Who? The Remus Helms doll! <laughs> what did you do? I did the only thing I could do. You discreetly got your speech out of the suitcase without the Remus Helms sex doll being exposed? No! I said... <laughs> what did you say? I said I can't accept the party's nomination. What? I would have been president. You didn't accept the Democratic uh, nomination for president? I couldn't do a thing like that. After getting the nomination? You expected me to take the nomination. <laughs> Why would I do a thing like that? Why? Why? <laughs> this is totally bizarre. <laughs> You, you went to the trouble to muster up all sorts of votes, all sorts of fundraising. Grandmothers across the country sent you $25 at a time. 90% of the country was watching you on TV that night. And you said, you, you said you couldn't accept the party's nomination. It just, it just didn't seem right. <laughs> Why? I mean, you weren't really a Democrat. I just thought that if I did something a little bit different, oh, it was so trite. Conventional. Of course, whoever gets all those votes, all the campaign money, they're going to accept the nomination. What is the point of asking? I, I do see your point. I guess it's better to say I don't accept the nomination. Exactly. Same thing with the marriage. Oh, but doesn't that mean you don't get married? Oh, who cares about the legal stuff? I've lived with Father Rish Yadinsky for 14 years now. <laughs> we don't need a silly old marriage license. <laughs> oh, no! F not Father Rishi Yudinsky, the funeral director with the Stutz Blackhawk. He was on episode 49 of the show and others. It's it's all on the Carl Garber with the K channel on YouTube. Subscribe! They, they, they put us on so many slots on the station, it's, it's hard to know when we'll be on. You gotta subscribe to the channel on YouTube. You have something against mixed race marriage? Not at all. I know. You think he's too good for me? Well, uh, yeah, I mean, that is sort of what I was thinking. I mean, he's got those adhesives and everything that he chews up. Are you gonna take over my case or not? No! Does that really mean yes? No! Then it isn't like not saying yes to the vows, but living with the man of your life like you are legally married? No! I know what it is. I'm just too famous for you. You can't handle the publicity the case will get. Oh, um, you know, ma'am. <laughs> Former <laughs> DNC nominated President of the United States. Um, <laughs> the problem I see here is those Remus Helm sex dolls, sur they surfaced first in the early 90s, and the phrase about not forgetting to flush came out about, say, 1982. That's what you're worried about? Um, well, actually, I'm, I'm more concerned about the fact that I've never heard of a woman who didn't accept the nomination the Democratic Party gave her to be president of the United States. <laughs> you thought I was going to be president of the United States? Well... Last night at the convention, accepting the nomination, speaking every night at the convention. What else does that mean? Uh, have you considered the chief dope waxer? There's no such position. 
You spent a lot of time a couple of years ago covering a woman who was in a one-man, one-woman runoff for the assistant dope waxer of Hellhole Palms. Why don't you think that position exists on the national level? Well, to level with you, mainly because nobody ever told me what a dope waxer does. Do you even know what a pack is? They raise and spend money to defeat cannonades, ballot measures. I, I have a degree in political science. Then why haven't you heard of dope waxers being elected? The chief ones, too. It isn't just about the assistant ones. I've heard it all right. That's episode 25 on the Carl Gerber with the K channel on YouTube. It's just uh, all those dope waxers there in Hellhole Palms, which is some underground area underneath a freeway. And it's a never ending one woman, one man runoff between two people. Unless one of them forgets to vote for themselves, that runoff will go on for ever unless there's a tiebreaker like what indian style buzz no that's where somebody gets attacked by a hose if they don't say buzz when someone says a multiple of seven we had to go through that during that shirtless dreidel game with myron alfumbra pronounced batting but spelled m and m when i was impostering the disgraced congressman dunker hunnan to be in that diabolical dreidel game where alfumbra etl was gambling for the soldier's genital Huh? That was episode 89 on the Carl Gerber with a K channel on YouTube. This is episode 113! You know what? I don't think this is the right match. What match? I don't think I'm going to have you take over my case after all. What a relief! Oh no, I have to use the latrine again. Do you recall that little ditty? I think it went plop, plop, fizz, fizz. Oh, what a relief it is! That was my campaign slogan. Oh, brother. Now you do remember me. Tell Remus Helms thanks for sending you. It's been, well, most unusual. Okay, this is the Carl Gerber Workplace Lawyer Show. I am actually a real workplace lawyer. Call 877-525-0700 during normal business hours. Group has been a results oriented law firm whose goal is to get the client what they deserve. They've represented thousands of California employees who've lost their jobs, been sexually harassed, subjected to employment discrimination, or were owed wages on an individualized or group basis, such as a class action. They have a high rate of success. There are few situations involving employment law that they have not confronted. At the forefront of employee rights, they're often the first employee law firm to confront a new legal issue. For an experienced employment lawyer, call 877 5 525-0700. That's 877-525-0700. They have call taker standing by. Online, read more about the firm at employeelawca.com. They have offices throughout Southern California. Make your work problem